During the past three years, the people of America have bought 1,970,000 cars priced in the neighborhood of $1,000. This is one of the largest and most popular of automobile markets, and one which holds tremendous promise for this year. It's a unique field in one way because it's the meeting place of eights and sixes. For about the same price, a buyer can get the cheapest of the straight eights, such as the Buick 40, Oldsmobile 880, or the Pontiac Deluxe 8, or the higher price sixes, such as the Packard 6, the Chrysler Royal, the DeSoto Custom 6, and others. This overlapping of sixes and eights at about the same price creates a dilemma for the buyer. Because most buyers in this field want the extra beauty, roominess, luxury, comfort, safety, and smoothness of performance which usually are associated with eights. On the other hand, most of these buyers also want the known operating economy, low maintenance costs, and high resale value which go with sixes. Therefore, buyers in this field, old and new, will welcome the news that there's one car and only one which gives them the size and luxury of the finer eights with the economy of a six. And that car is the Nash Ambassador 6 for 1939, the finest of the sixes. It's a car that is absolutely unique in value, so much so that it's proving top favorite with thousands of 1939 buyers who truly recognize top value. To prove this greater value, Let's compare it point by point with both sixes and eights in its price class. First, let's compare it for beauty. No one can look at this picture without realizing that here, indeed, is a beautiful car. But more than that, this car has a style value hundreds of dollars above its price because in every respect, it's the exact style counterpart of the luxurious Nash Ambassador 8, the aristocrat of the medium price field. It has the same strikingly beautiful front end treatment with its pleasing combination of catwalk grille and center radiator grille, its sweeping fenders with modern built-in headlamps, its massive bumper and bumper guard. It has the same dramatic styling of the hood, the same forward flowing lines, the same smoothly molded contours. It has the same flowing body lines as the Ambassador 8, the same wide stainless steel molding stretching the whole length of the body. The Nash Ambassador 6 offers a choice between slipstream and trunk models at no extra cost. In this respect, it's alone in its field. You cannot have this choice at any price in the Buick 40, Chrysler Royal, DeSoto Custom 6, Oldsmobile 880, Packard 6, or Pontiac 8. Both Ambassador 6 rear contours conceal the largest luggage spaces in Nash history. The trunk model has 34% more space than last year. Even the slipstream model, which has counterbalanced hinges, has 11% more space than last year's trunk. So, although beauty is admittedly a matter of taste, we believe that most buyers will prefer the modern, yet restrained styling of the Ambassador 6 to that of cars which go to freakish extremes in an attempt to be ultra-modern, or cars which stubbornly cling to out-of-date lines in the face of fundamentally valuable style advances. And now for those who appreciate size and roominess, as well as beauty, the Ambassador 6, boasts a 121-inch wheelbase, an inch longer than any of the supposedly bigger eights in its price class, such as the Buick, Olds, or Pontiac, two inches longer than Chrysler and DeSoto, and only an inch less than Packard. And in the case of the latter, you will see that the Ambassador 6 offers more body room in spite of Packard's inch-longer wheelbase. In overall length, the Ambassador 6 stands absolutely alone in its price class. Let's look at the figures. Nash, Ambassador 6, 206 and 1 quarter inches. DeSoto Custom 6, only 202 and 516. Buick 40, only 202. Chrysler Royal 6, only 201 and 716. Oldsmobile 880, only 197. Packard 6, only 196 and 516. Pontiac 8, only 196 and 1 quarter. Now a natural result of greater length is exceptional roominess. Here are roominess and comfort far beyond your expectations in this price class. Let's check the actual figures. Taking the rear compartment first, we find that the Ambassador 6 gives 50 full inches of rear seating width, enough room to seat three full-size passengers comfortably. Compared with this, we find that Chrysler, DeSoto, Oldsmobile, and Pontiac are only 48 inches wide, two inches less than the Nash. Buick and Packard are even narrower. Now, in elbow width, Nash has 60 and 3 quarter inches, Packard 60 and 1 quarter, Buick only 56 and a half, Oldsmobile only 56 and a quarter, Chrysler only 55 and a half, Pontiac 55 and a half, and DeSoto only 55 and 1 quarter. 
Here again, the Ambassador 6 leads the field, offering up to five inches more elbow room than the other cars. As for leg room, the Nash Ambassador 6 is in a class by itself. It offers five inches more rear seat leg room than the Buick 40, six full inches more than the DeSoto, Oldsmobile 880, Packard 6, and Pontiac 8, and six and a half inches more than the Chrysler Royal. So in all the vital rear seat measurements that spell comfort, the Ambassador 6 leads the field by a wide margin. Now in the front compartment. Nash has 54 inches of seating width, 55 and one half inches of shoulder room, 38 inches of headroom, and 18 and three quarter inches of leg room. Again, the Nash Ambassador 6 has the edge on all its rivals. In fact, the Ambassador 6 interior is exactly the same as the larger, more expensive Ambassador 8 in size and roominess. Now the next point for comparison is luxury. And here we can say without hesitation that the Ambassador 6 is luxurious beyond the standards of other cars in its price group. For instance, you have only to look around the beautiful interior of the Ambassador 6 to be convinced of its unusual quality, indicated by its burled walnut finish moldings, its attractive die-cast hardware, and the rich, fine quality upholstery. Under the upholstery are luxurious Marshall-type springs. Then Ambassador 6 buyers may avail themselves at slight extra cost of the most luxurious seating in America. Sponge foam seat cushions. Sponge foam is an entirely new porous rubber material. Cool in summer because it's air ventilated, a material that always holds its shape and provides the utmost seating comfort. In combination with the Marshall type springs, sponge foam seats offer double comfort. And remember this, the Ambassador 6 is the only automobile in this group of cars that makes sponge foam seating available. The Buick 40, Chrysler Royal, DeSoto Custom 6, Oldsmobile 880, Packard 6, and Pontiac 8 as yet do not offer it at any price. The rear floor of the Ambassador 6 is flat and level, with no hump for rear seat passengers to straddle or stumble over. But turning to the front compartment, we find a welcome new feature. It's Nash's panorama visibility. The Nash windshield is three and a half inches wider and proportionately higher this year. This exceptional visibility makes driving easier, and most important, it makes driving safer. And a comfort touch? The seat may be adjusted forward and backward. It also raises slightly in the forward position for additional driver comfort. And look at the attractive instrument panel with its rich burled walnut finish. Examine the artistic and convenient grouping of the easily read, indirectly lighted speedometer and gauges. Get the bright and modern effect of this center grille, behind which either of two Nash-engineered RCA push-button radios may be installed. Engage the extra roominess of the Nash package compartment, one of the roomiest in any automobile. And then notice that Nash alone in this price class offers a choice between the conventional floor gear shift lever and the newer steering post gear shift, which is an optional extra. People who prefer the more familiar floor gear shift lever can get it in the Ambassador 6. But in all other cars in this price group, you have to take the steering post gear shift. Outward beauty and inward luxury are things which can be seen, measured, or felt. But there are many other Ambassador 6 features which cannot be discovered until you actually ride in this luxurious car. First among these is riding ease. There are four good reasons for Nash riding ease, which in combination give you the kind of ride you simply cannot get in other cars in this price class. The first reason is balanced weight. Nash distributes the weight equally between front and rear to eliminate pitching and tossing on rough roads. The second reason is midsection seating. Passengers are cradled between the axles, where the most comfortable ride is provided. The third reason is synchronized springing, a uniform rate of spring action front and rear that gives the Nash a level, controlled ride. The fourth reason is double-acting shock absorbers of two different types. In front, unique sea leg shock absorbers, to reduce side sway as well as up and down motion. And in the rear, vertical shock absorbers, 40% larger than last year. No other car offers this unique combination. Now, another major ride factor is quietness. You'll appreciate how quiet the 1939 Ambassador 6 is when we tell you that it's 25% more quiet than cars have ever been before. Why? Because of sand Mortex an entirely new and exclusive insulating material developed by Nash Kelvinator engineers, which is liberally applied to all Nash bodies. We'll demonstrate it. Listen. Here's how an ordinary, uninsulated steel body panel sounds when struck with a mallet. 
Now the same panel, insulated with San Mortex, sounds like this when struck with a mallet. Notice the difference? You'll appreciate the results, too. For you'll have a feeling of comfort and relaxation inside an Ambassador 6, which you've never felt in any car before. And you'll be amazed at how much better the radio reception is in a car that really is quiet. Now, still another important factor is safety. It's a satisfying feeling for Nash owners to have the peace of mind which comes from knowing that they're riding inside the strongest all-steel body in the industry. Steel welded to steel and reinforced by steel. More box member construction than in Buick, Pontiac, DeSoto, Chrysler, or Packard. And in addition, this body is mounted on the famous Nash dual frame, an exclusive frame construction unlike any other. Nash believes it to be the strongest in the entire industry. The body frame consists of a rugged subframe of channel and box construction welded to the under part of the Nash body. This is also bolted to the heavy X-type rigidly built main frame of the chassis. This actually gives Nash two frames in one. Each frame is unusually strong and rugged in itself, and each reinforces the other. Contrast this with a single shortened frame of the Buick 40, which does not support the full length of the body and gas tank. Here is a good reason for buying a fine six instead of a cheap eight. Brakes are next on the list, and here again, the Nash Ambassador 6 has a clear-cut superiority over the other cars in its field. All cars in this price field use hydraulic brakes, but hydraulic brakes are not enough. Nash brakes are bigger than other cars, giving longer lining life and fewer adjustments. In fact, the Ambassador 6, with a braking area of 176 square inches, has the biggest brakes in this field. Compare Nash's 176 square inches with only 168 on the Packard 6, only 162 on the Oldsmobile 880, only 158 on the Buick 40, only 155 on the Chrysler Royal and the DeSoto Custom 6, and only 149 on the Pontiac 8. These figures show that the Ambassador 6 has from 8 to 25 square inches more brake lining area than these other cars, which naturally means quicker, smoother stopping, fewer adjustments, and longer brake lining life. Another extra value feature of the Nash Ambassador 6 is superior ventilation. The Ambassador offers no draft ventilation of the most advanced type. And in addition, Ambassador 6 buyers have the privilege of equipping their cars with an amazing new system of conditioned air for winter driving, one that's offered only by Nash. It's the automatic weather eye, Nash's exclusive heating and ventilating system. The system begins with a cowl ventilator. Through this, the motion of the car forces fresh outside air into a compartment where excess moisture from rain or snow is shed. Then air is forced through a filter, which cleanses it of dust, soot, grit, and insects, and through a high-efficiency heating unit, which warms the air to the exact temperature you have dialed. The heating unit is thermostatically controlled, like a gas or oil furnace in a modern house. Now, here's something important. In most cars, forward motion tends to create a vacuum within the body which draws in cold, unheated air through every body opening. In contrast, the large volume of fresh air entering through the Nash cowl ventilator creates pressure inside the Nash body, which is slightly higher than outside pressure. Thus, used air is constantly being forced out of the Nash. And equally important, deadly carbon monoxide fumes cannot seep into the Nash body because of this higher pressure inside. So you see the weather eye is a revolutionary contribution to both comfort and safety. Now for another exclusive Nash luxury feature, the sleeping car, a unique extra value feature which permits the owner to convert the rear compartment into a six-foot double bed. The sleeping car is designed for campers, hunters, fishermen, and tourists, or for anyone else who travels. We've seen how the finest of the sixes surpasses all the eights and sixes in his price class in style, comfort, and safety. In a moment, We'll take a look at the most important part of any car, the engine. The heart of the Ambassador 6 is the famous Nash valve and head power plant. It combines in one engine the power, speed, smoothness, long life, and economical operation which all modern buyers want and which they cannot get to such a degree in any other six or eight cylinder engine in the Nash Ambassador 6 price class. Now before we compare with any engines in particular, Let's compare with the relative advantages of six and eight cylinder engines in general. Why do some people just assume that an eight is superior to a six? Well, for one thing, doesn't an eight have more power? 
Not necessarily. The Ford 60 is an eight-cylinder engine, yet it has only 60 horsepower, compared with 105 horsepower in the Nash Ambassador 6. Horsepower depends on total cubic capacity of the engine and efficiency of design, not just on the number of cylinders. Isn't an eight smoother and more flexible? Perhaps by comparison with some sixes, but the Ambassador 6, because of its balanced three-point engine mounting, seven bearing crankshafts and other refinements, is so smooth and flexible that the average driver, if blindfolded, could not guess whether it had six or eight cylinders. In short, flexibility and smoothness come from quality design, not from the number of cylinders. On the other hand, a six has many tangible advantages over an eight. It's more economical, has fewer parts to wear and replace, has a wider market for resale than can be expected for an eight in this price class. So any buyer who wants economy combined with performance and who looks ahead to high resale value undoubtedly will agree that the real advantages of a six outweigh the supposed advantages of an eight. And in the finest of the sixes, the Ambassador Six, the buyer gets truly outstanding engine superiority over other sixes and eights in this field. What is it that puts the Ambassador Six engine ahead of other sixes and eights in its price class? First of all, the Ambassador Six has the only six-cylinder engine in the world that combines valve and head design, twin ignition, and monitor-sealed manifolding. Let's see what each of these features means to the motorist. First, valve and head design. Engineers recognize the finer performance which valve and head design gives. Here's the difference. The Ambassador 6 valve and head engine has true downdraft carburation. The fuel mixture travels straight down to the cylinders. Exhaust gases are pushed straight up and out by the return stroke. This makes for most rapid and complete filling and clearing of the combustion chamber, and therefore better performance. L-head engines cannot give true downdraft carburation. The fuel mixture must turn upward to get to the cylinders. It's easy to see why such carburation is less efficient. Now for another valve and head advantage. All of the power of the explosion is directed straight downward on the piston head. The explosion force drives the piston down in the same way that a well-directed hammer blow drives a nail. On the other hand, only part of the explosion force in an L-head cylinder is directed straight downward onto the piston head. It's like hitting a nail slightly off-center with a hammer. So, faster and more complete combustion and more direct use of power are the two major reasons why every major world speed and performance record on land, on sea, and in the air is held by valve and head engines. Costly valve and head design set the Ambassador 6 engine apart from all the other sixes in its price group and from the Oldsmobile and Pontiac 8s, which have L-head engines. Only one other car anywhere near the price has a valve and head engine. That car is the Buick 40, the cheapest of the Buicks. But valve and head design is the only major point of resemblance between the two, because the Ambassador 6, alone in the entire field, offers twin ignition, the second vital engine superiority of the Ambassador 6. In the Nash Ambassador 6, two spark plugs are used for each cylinder. Now, it's easy to see that with two spark plugs firing from opposite sides of the cylinder, Fuel combustion takes place more quickly and more completely than in other engines using only one spark plug. Notice, too, that the spark plugs of the valve and head Buick, as well as all L-head engines, are off-center. You can see how the fuel in the far corner of the single ignition cylinder would get the spark last. More complete combustion naturally means greater economy. Quicker combustion means smoother, more flexible power. If you want further proof of the value of twin ignition, consider this. The United States government demands twin ignition in all government and transport airplanes. Now, the third vital engine superiority of Nash is... Built-in manifolds known as monitor-sealed manifolding. This is an exclusive Nash feature. And although a costly and complex development, its principles can be explained simply. All other engines use exposed manifolds hung outside the engine block. They rely upon a hot spot which concentrates exhaust heat around the center of the intake manifold, but leaves the ends without heat regulation. In contrast, Nash intake manifolds are cast inside the cylinder head, where the incoming fuel is kept at efficient engine temperature by the heat of the water jacketing, which surrounds the entire manifold. Thus, under all conditions, the fuel mixture in the Ambassador 6 manifold is held at uniform temperature, a temperature which spells maximum economy, which is not true of competitive engines. The difference can be illustrated by heating a steel rod over a gas jet. The center of the rod directly above the flame naturally gets much hotter than the ends away from the flame. 
This resembles the hot spot manifolding of most cars. On the other hand, if the same steel rod were heated in a bucket of hot water, all parts of the rod would be heated equally. This illustrates how Nash manifolds are surrounded by water jackets and thus are kept at uniform temperature. The result is that the Nash Ambassador 6 will perform all day in desert heat or climb long, steep grades in the mountains without the incoming fuel exceeding a fixed, even temperature range. Resultant economy is outstanding. Under similar conditions, competitive 6s and 8s with outside manifolds would tend to overheat with the resultant temporary loss of pulling power. Another clear-cut advantage of Nash manifolding over that of other 6s is found in the fact that Nash has four intake ports, whereas most other 6s have only three. This makes sure that Nash end cylinders will not be starved for fuel, another factor in Nash's superior smoothness and operating economy. In addition to the three major advantages of valve and head design, twin ignition, and built-in manifolding, there is a long list of other quality features of the Ambassador 6 engine, which set it still farther ahead of any other 6s and of the cheaper 8s. Such features as Nash perfected three-point engine mounting. The three-point mounting, high in front and low at the back, absorbs engine vibration and gives a smoothness which cannot be told from that of any eight. Double automatic spark control permits the spark to be advanced to the maximum degree for improved cruising efficiency, yet automatically retards it when necessary to prevent knocking or pinging under sudden heavy pulling conditions. Automatic choke control and automatic fast idle. The automatic choke control is built right into the carburetor so there is no external linkage to get out of order. And the automatic fast idle prevents stalling during warm-up periods. An advanced type oil filter, which definitely results in longer intervals between oil changes. This is an extra money-saving feature not offered in the Buick 40, Oldsmobile 880, or Pontiac 8. An example of how eight-cylinder cars in this price class have to leave out important features in order to bring eight-cylinder engines down into this price range. Heavily ribbed crankcase another feature which helps give the Ambassador 6 its amazing smoothness. Four ring aluminum pistons with invar struts for tighter sealing of power, quiet operation, and less weight. Neither Buick or any other car in this group offers the invar strut feature. Individually cool cylinders, a more costly construction whose purpose is to increase engine life. Two other cars in this price group, Chrysler Royal and DeSoto Custom 6, cool their cylinders in pairs. Full-length water jackets, a long-life feature which, surprisingly enough, is not found on the Buick 40 or the Packard 6. Pressure lubrication to all vital engine points, including piston pins. Again, strangely enough, this complete pressure lubrication is not found in the Buick 40, Chrysler Royal, or DeSoto Custom 6. Seven-bearing crankshafts. The Ambassador 6 crankshaft is a splendid example of the extra quality which is built into all parts of this finest of six-cylinder engines to ensure smoother performance, greater economy, and longer life. For instance, look at the bearings. The Ambassador 6 has a total bearing area of 66.34 square inches. Each of the seven bearings and each square inch of bearing surface contributes its full share to the silky smoothness and long life of the Nash engine. On the other hand, Buick, Oldsmobile, and Pontiac use only five main bearings, with a total bearing area ranging from 11 square inches to 15 square inches less than the Nash Ambassador 6. And the Chrysler Royal, DeSoto Custom 6, and Packard 6 use only four main bearings, with bearing areas ranging from nearly seven square inches to over 20 inches less than the Nash. It's easy to see that an engine with all of these features excels in performance, economy, and value. Each feature means motoring value, from valve and head design twin ignition, built-in manifolding, and all the other advantages right down to main bearing area. Nash offers them all, but no other car has all of these advantages. In addition, Nash buyers, unlike many others, can equip their cars with the famous Nash cruising gear. A few other cars in this field offer an overdrive at high extra cost, but not all. You cannot get a cruising gear at any price in the Buick 40 or Pontiac Deluxe 8. The Nash cruising gear is an automatic fourth forward speed, which the owner can call into operation at any time when the car gets up to highway speed. What does it do? It reduces the engine revolutions by 30% without decreasing the speed of the car. In fact, the maximum speed of the Nash Ambassador 6 is slightly increased by the cruising gear. It saves engine wear, too. For example, 
At 60 miles per hour, the engine speed of a Buick 40 is 3,200 revolutions per minute. The engine speed of the Ambassador 6 with cruising gear is only 2,125 revolutions per minute. In other words, the Ambassador 6 at 60 miles per hour turns over at 1,075 fewer engine revolutions a minute than the Buick. Naturally, this means less engine wear and greater gasoline economy. We could go on indefinitely proving that the Nash Ambassador 6 not only is the finest of the sixes, but it also far outranks any built to a price eight in beauty, size, roominess, comfort, safety, performance, and economy. And speaking of price, it should come as good news to every buyer that in spite of its many quality features, the Nash Ambassador 6 is the second lowest priced car in this field, and by far the lowest price when you consider dollar for dollar value offered the buyer. Why pay more for other cars that offer so much less in the important things? Wheelbase, leg room, seating width, safety, and long life. Such cars do not offer more value simply because they cost more. Actually, unless you buy the Ambassador 6, you will pay much more, but get less. And in addition to low first cost, you've already seen why the Ambassador 6 costs so little to operate, why you can expect longer life and fewer repairs and thus save money every mile you drive it. Furthermore, Nash maintains a nationwide service organization. Nash service is available at over 1,800 points located in every important trading center in the United States. And finally, because the Nash Ambassador 6 is built to stand up so long, and because its reputation for economical operation is so high, you can count on it to retain an exceptionally high resale value. Most used cars buyers know that a 6 is more economical than an 8. Moreover, two years from now, all cars will have the modern features Nash gives you today, such as headlights in the fenders, harmonious streamlining from front to back, and advanced styling in every detail. So you can buy an Ambassador 6 today with the assurance that its resale value two years from now will be high because it has more of the advanced style details upon which future resale value depends. It will not be outmoded, as will some other car less modern in design that you might purchase this year. We believe that every buyer who really compares the cars in this price group, value by value and advantage by advantage, will be convinced that his best investment lies not in the cheapest of the eights, not in the conventional but no lower price sixes, but in the finest of the sixes, the Nash Ambassador 6 for 1939. In every factor that really counts in beauty, size, comfort, performance, safety, economy, high resale value, and low first cost. It's the outstanding value in its field today. There's a new value leader in the popular price field. It's that thrilling new Nash Lafayette for 1939. The car everybody likes. The car that offers more in beauty, size, roominess, comfort, safety, performance, and economy than any car at or near its price. It has been entirely redesigned for 1939. Not a mere modification of last year's appearance, but an entire restyling. The 1939 Nash cannot be confused with any other car. It combines the best of accepted style principles with a fresh beauty all its own. And there's a reason. This year, Nash body engineers seeking a fresh viewpoint called in George Walker, famed industrial designer. A completely new style conception was evolved. Then, Nash invested more than $2 million in new dyes and tools to make a reality of this new style conception. The result? An automobile that's alive, alert, that looks eager to go when it's standing still. What's the secret of its distinction? Well, a glance at the front end gives you one answer. Nash has adopted the catwalk grill for better cooling, but has retained the dignity of the conventional radiator grill. A happy combination of the accepted with the new. Look how this stylish grill blends into the pleasing lines of the car itself. Observe the sweep and flow of the molded body, its grace and harmony. Get the effect of the handsomely styled rear end. Unlike many cars, the Nash Lafayette is as beautiful from the rear as from the front. And here's something important for the Nash Lafayette buyer. He gets the same impressive exterior styling and interior roominess 
as the buyer of an Ambassador 8. These style superiorities stand out at a glance, but there are other important details which show the length to which Nash has gone to create a car of unmatched loveliness. For instance, the radiator grill. With but one exception, this is the only die-cast grill in its price class. Conventional grills are stamped, not cast. Nash uses a die-cast grill because it's heavier, more rugged. It's all one piece. No sections to squeak or rattle. Stamped grills must be made out of light, pliable metal or they couldn't be stamped. In addition, a die-cast grill takes a better finish than stamped grills. Now, examine more closely the big, sturdy bumper and bumper guard. What a contrast to the lighter, less handsome bumpers of other cars. The built-in fender headlights with their chrome-plated bands add more modern beauty to the front-end treatment. This is truly styling for the future. The trend definitely is toward this type of headlight. Buyers will demand it in their 1940 cars. In this respect, a 1939 Nash Lafayette will be as much in style next year as it is today. In addition, Nash Lafayette fender headlights mean increased safety. At night, the widely spaced headlights cause approaching motorists to give a Nash Lafayette more leeway in passing. And another advantage, the wind roar caused by exposed headlamps is eliminated. Here's another example of Nash style finesse. The fan motif on Nash fenders, hood and rear deck gives them a touch that's different, that breaks the monotony. And here's something you won't find on most other low-priced cars. A broad, full-length body molding of stainless steel. Contrast this with the usual painted stripes or short, narrow chrome strips. Counterbalanced hinges on the luggage compartment doors of coupes and slipstream sedans let you raise the door easily, and it stays where you put it. And here are the biggest luggage compartments in Nash history. In the slipstream models, they're 11 and one half percent larger than last year's trunk model. And this year's trunk model is 34 percent larger than it was in 1938. Now, what makes the Nash Lafayette look so much longer than other cars in its price class? More designing magic? No, sir. Length is something you cannot counterfeit. But Nash Lafayette is long. Let's compare. Nash Lafayette wheelbase, 117 inches. Pontiac quality six, only 115. Oldsmobile 660, only 115. Mercury, only 116. And Nash Lafayette wheelbase is even more striking when compared with the all three cars. Nash Lafayette, 117 inches. Ford 85 Deluxe, only 112. Chevrolet Deluxe, only 112 and a half. Plymouth Deluxe, only 114. And in overall length, the Nash Lafayette is 16 feet, 10 and a quarter inches. More than a foot longer overall than, uh, well, for instance, the Oldsmobile 660. A car almost $50 higher in price. When we get inside, you'll see what this extra length means to interior roominess. But before we step in, let's notice a couple of other things, such as the island-type running boards. Graceful and distinctive, easier to keep clean, because mud and water run off more freely. But uh, let's hear what the ladies think about running boards. Well, thank goodness the Nash still has a running board. Makes a woman feel like a mountain climber, trying to get in and out of cars without them. Notice, too, the generous width of both doors. And the fact that the doors don't come down as low as in some cars. And therefore, don't scrape on the average curb when open. And you don't have to slam Nash Lafayette doors. With Nash's silent safety door striker plates, doors close easily and quietly. Inside, we'll consider some more comparative dimensions. But first, we'll let the beauty of the interior sink in. The quality of the fine upholstery and the comfort of these deeply padded chair height seats. The cushions are soft and firm. They have more coil springs in them than comparable cars and extra padding. And at slight extra cost, Nash Lafayette buyers can have the comfort of the new Nash sponge foam, air ventilated rubber seat cushions. Incidentally, sponge foam is not ordinary sponge rubber. It's lighter, more resilient, and cooler because it's porous. It's built on top of the regular seat spring construction to give the softest, most sag-proof seat support yet divine. In sedans, you can get sponge foam either for front or rear seat, or both. A choice of two upholsteries is offered, rich tan cloth or beautiful mohair. The burled walnut finish moldings and brightly polished hardware are as beautiful as the upholstery. But everyone is impressed with the roominess as well as the beauty of the Dash Lafayette. To see how roomy it really is, let's compare it with other cars that cost more, yet provide less room. First, rear seating width. Nash Lafayette, 50 inches. Dodge Special, only 48 and a quarter. Oldsmobile, 660, only 46 and a half. Pontiac Quality 6, only 46 and a half. Mercury, only 49 and a half. 
Let's compare elbow room. Nash Lafayette, 60 and three quarter inches. Dodge, only 55 and three quarters. Oldsmobile, only 56. Pontiac, only 55 and one quarter. Mercury, only 57. Let's compare leg room. Nash Lafayette, 26 inches. Dodge, only 20. Oldsmobile, only 22. Pontiac, only 22 and three quarters. Mercury, only 17. To sum up, Nash Lafayette gives up to three and a half inches more seating width, up to five and a half inches more elbow room, and up to nine inches more leg room than other cars in its price class. And roominess means comfort. Now let's compare Nash Lafayette with the all three cars. What about seating width? Nash Lafayette, 50 inches. Chevrolet Master Deluxe, only 46 and a half. Plymouth Deluxe, only 48 and a half. Ford 85 Deluxe, 50. What about elbow room? Nash Lafayette, 60 and three quarter inches. Chevrolet, only 55 and a half. Plymouth, only 56 and a half. Ford V8, only 56 and a half. And what about leg room? Nash Lafayette, 26 inches. Chevrolet, only 23. Plymouth, only 20. Ford, only 20. The Nash Lafayette gives up to three and a half inches more seating width, up to five and a half inches more elbow room, and up to six inches more leg room than the rear seats of the only slightly less expensive, but much less roomy, all three class. And notice that the leg room in the Nash Lafayette rear compartment is all leg room. No tunnel or hump to straddle or stumble over. The hypoid rear axle used in all Nash sedans accounts for that. It gives Nash an almost level floor without sacrificing low center of gravity. But to show just how remarkable Nash leg room really is, let's compare Nash Lafayette with cars costing hundreds of dollars more. And even there, Lafayette gives five inches more leg room than the Buick 60, two inches more than the Lincoln Zephyr, six inches more than the Packard 120. This, we believe you'll agree, is roomies. Now, let's look in the front compartment. First, let's compare front seating width. Nash Lafayette, 54 inches. Dodge Special, 54. Oldsmobile, 660, only 49 and a half. Pontiac Quality 6, only 51. And uh, what about front shoulder room? Nash Lafayette, 55 and a half inches. Dodge, only 54. Oldsmobile, only 52. Pontiac, only 52 and a half. And what about front headroom? Nash Lafayette, 38 inches. Dodge, 39 and a half. Oldsmobile, only 35 and a half. Pontiac, only 34 and one quarter. And front leg room. Nash Lafayette, 18 and three quarter inches. Dodge, only 17 and one quarter. Oldsmobile, only 18. Pontiac, only 17 and a half. Again, cold figures tell the story. Nash Lafayette gives up to four and a half inches more seating width, up to three and a half inches more shoulder room, up to three and a half inches more headroom, and up to one and a half inches more leg room than other cars in his price class. All of which means utmost comfort for Nash passengers. As for the lowest price field, we won't run through all the figures again, but we can tell you, and you can check this any way you want to, that the Nash Lafayette gives up to four inches more seating width, up to two and a half inches more shoulder room, up to two inches more headroom, and up to one and three quarter inches more leg room than the cars in the all three class and see how much unobstructed floor space the front compartment of the Nash Lafayette offers, especially when equipped with the steering post gear shift. The steering post gear shift is an optional extra. Other manufacturers are saying, take it or leave it on this feature. But Nash gives you your choice. A Nash steering post gear shift is easier to operate due to the ball bearing mounting of the shift lever and to constant mesh gears in all four speeds. No other car in its price class offers such easy shifting no other car in its price class offers constant mesh gears in all four speeds. Look at the attractive instrument panel. Who'd think this is the lowest price Nash car? Look at that large glove and parcel compartment. And at the beautiful built-in radio grill, behind which can be placed either one of two Nash-engineered RCA radios with modern push-button tuning. Notice, too, that the panel is inclined at about the same angle to your line of vision as that at which you'd hold a book. See how easy it is to read the instruments at a glance. And look out through that windshield. It is three and a half inches wider and proportionately higher this year. This means a broader panorama of the road ahead and on each side. Increases driving safety. Decreases driving fatigue. Speaking of safety, what about brakes? Nash uses super hydraulic brakes. And they really are super. Smooth acting, sure stopping, inherently equalized, easy to apply. But more than that, they have the biggest braking area of any car anywhere near its price class. Nash, 168 square inches. Dodge, only 155. Oldsmobile, only 148. Pontiac, only 149. Mercury, only 162. No larger, by the way, than the Ford. 
And as for the all three cars... Nash Lafayette, 168 square inches. Chevrolet, only 158. Ford 85, only 162. Plymouth, only 144. Other cars have from 6 to 24 square inches less braking lining area than the Nash. That means for them, more trips to the service station for adjustments. And more money spent for relining. The clutch is another Nash Lafayette advantage. Big, sturdy, easy to operate, ventilated to prolong its life. This also prevents a vacuum, which otherwise might draw oil into the clutch. And connected with the clutch is an outstanding feature. The clutch pedal starter. Push the clutch pedal clear down, and the engine starts. What an advantage. No possibility of starting the car in gear. No need to take a hand from the wheel or a foot off the brake to start the Nash engine. A safety feature, too. For in the event that the owner should stall in a dangerous place, one smooth, natural operation depresses the clutch pedal and restarts the engine. Here's another special convenience and safety feature. The combination steering and ignition lock, which minimizes the possibility of theft because it is impossible for anyone to steer the car when locked. But the thing every driver wants is performance. And that's where another real thrill awaits him. So let's take a look at the engine, the heart of any car. First, let's consider horsepower. For horsepower, like wheelbase, is something you cannot counterfeit. And here's what we find. The Nash Lafayette offers more horsepower than any other car in its price class, or near it. Again, let's look at the record. Nash Lafayette, 99 horsepower. Mercury, only 95. Oldsmobile, 660, only 90. Dodge, only 87. Pontiac, quality 6, only 85. And, of course, no one expects the all three cars to compare, and they don't. Nash Lafayette, 99 horsepower. Ford Deluxe, only 85. Chevrolet Deluxe, only 85. Plymouth Deluxe, only 82. And yet, this extra power of the Nash comes from engine efficiency rather than engine size. Actual figures show that the Nash Lafayette engine develops almost 2.5% more horsepower per cubic inch of piston displacement than the Oldsmobile, 10% more than the Pontiac, practically 7% more than the Dodge, nearly 7.5% more than the Mercury. And in round numbers, the Nash Lafayette engine develops 8% more horsepower per cubic inch than the Chevrolet, 10% more than the Ford 85, and 4% more than the Plymouth. And the power of the Nash Lafayette means more than just thrilling performance. It's a safety factor, because it means reserve power for emergencies. A durability factor, because it means less strain on the engine at normal driving speed. Furthermore, the 1939 Nash Lafayette engine gives at least 10% more fuel economy than last year. When a survey conducted among several thousand Nash Lafayette owners showed them to be averaging better than 17 miles per gallon. And here's further dramatic proof of Nash economy. The 1939 Nash Lafayette won first place in its price class in the famous annual Gilmore Yosemite economy run held in January. Lafayette's record was 21.25 actual miles per gallon for the grueling 314-mile mountain run. That, we believe you will agree, is real economy. Such economy results from a new and improved higher compression cylinder head that uses regular gas, more efficient valve timing, a dual carburetor, a brand new feature in this six-cylinder price field, plus double automatic spark control, features which mean more power, smoother power, with less gasoline. But even more important to performance with economy is the exclusive Nash built-in manifold that accomplishes results you cannot get in any other car. What would you think of an architect who, in designing a house, would place the heating conduits outside where they would be affected by every change in temperature? Yet with all except Nash engines, the gas distribution system is outside the cylinder block, subject to all temperature variations. Only in Nash are the intake manifolds inside the engine block. This makes it possible for them to be water jacketed, which keeps them at a uniform temperature their entire length. This means that the engine operates on a leaner gasoline mixture summer and winter, providing more miles per gallon and uniformly brilliant performance. Now let's talk about oil economy. No other car in the Nash Lafayette price class uses the invar strut aluminum alloy piston with four rings. Add to this the fact that Nash uses full pressure lubrication and full length water jackets. Then you'll realize why Nash Lafayette owners seldom have to stop for oil between regular changes. Another factor of Nash performance is the smoothness of its engine. The major reason for this is the seven-bearing crankshaft. No other car in its price class uses more than three or four bearings. Naturally, this gives Nash an outstanding superiority in bearing area. Here are the figures. 
Nash has 24 and one quarter square inches more bearing area than old 60. Over 26 more than the Dodge Special. 24 and a quarter more than the Pontiac Quality 6. And 27 and a quarter more than the Mercury. Now, by comparison with the all three cars, Nash has nearly 30 more than the Ford, over 24 and a half more than Chevrolet, and over 26 more than Plymouth. Greater bearing area means superior engine smoothness, longer engine life. Heavy ribbing on the crankcase and balanced three-point rubber engine mountings further reduce vibration and increase smoothness. But for even greater performance, economy, and smoothness, Nash offers its famous cruising gear, another outstanding feature available only in Nash Lafayette among low-priced cars. What is it? The cruising gear is a fourth speed forward that can be shifted into operation automatically when desired by the driver. The cruising gear reduces engine speed 30% without decreasing the speed of the car. When in use, the cruising gear increases gasoline mileage four to five miles per gallon. Increases oil mileage as much as 50%. Increases the car's maximum speed. Prolongs engine life. Increases operating smoothness and quietness. People today demand the outstanding performance and economy Nash Lafayette engines give. But they also insist on safety. We've already mentioned several safety features. Super hydraulic brakes, wider windshields, and clutch pedal starter. But the feature which makes Nash Lafayette owners feel so safe is the fortress-like all-steel body with safety glass which they know surrounds them. Nash engineers know that more box-type construction is used in Nash than in any other car. In the roof rail, the header panel, the door pillars, the body sills, wherever extra strength is needed. This is more expensive, but provides greater safety for the owner. This pictures the value of box-type construction better than words. A box of any kind with the lid on is far harder to twist or bend than one with the lid off. Now, here's a picture sent in by an owner which shows what we mean. This 475-pound transformer fell 28 feet, or the equivalent of three stories, onto a Nash sedan during a storm without injury to any passenger. All it did was dent the top. That's strength for you. And under this husky body, there's a dual frame, the only one of its kind which gives Nash the strongest frame it's possible to build. And, uh, by the way, this kind of body and frame construction, plus longer wheelbase, demand adequate weight. Other manufacturers talk about engineering weight out of their cars. Nash contends that you can't engineer something out that never was in. Now, hand in hand with safety goes comfort. Let's check the reasons why so many people say the Nash Lafayette is the most comfortable car they've ever ridden in. Balanced weight. Equal weight distribution on front and rear axles. Eliminates pitching and tossing on rough roads. Mid-section seating. Fashions are cradled between the axles, not over them where the bumps are felt most. Synchronized springing. Uniform rate of spring action, both front and rear. Both ends of the car react alike to a bump. This cuts out backseat pitching. Super hydraulic shock absorbers. Double-acting C-leg shock absorbers on the front wheels because there this kind is more effective and 40% larger double-acting vertical shock absorbers on the rear wheel, where bumps are even harder and even more shock must be absorbed. And finally, because quietness is part of comfort, Nash provides sand Mortex insulation, an entirely new insulating material which makes Nash Lafayette bodies 25% more quiet. We'll show you the difference. For instance, that's how an uninsulated panel sounds when hit with a mallet. Now the same panel, with sand Mortex insulation, sounds like this. Hear the difference? And you'll notice the difference, although you won't hear it every mile you drive. One thing you'll observe particularly is the ease with which you can hear your radio even at high speed. And now... The greatest comfort and safety feature ever offered. Available in no other automobile, regardless of price. The feature which literally gives you June weather in January which permits you to dial in the kind of weather you want just as you dial in your favorite radio program. What is it? The Automatic Weather Eye, the Nash exclusive heating and ventilating system. Weather Eye conditioned air begins with the extra large cowl ventilator. Through this ventilator, the motion of the car forces fresh outside air into a compartment where excess moisture from rain or snow is shed. Then the air is forced through a filter which cleanses it of dust, soot, and grit and through a high-efficiency heating unit which warms the air to the exact temperature you've chosen. The air is then circulated under slight pressure, without draft, 
to every part of the car. The air is in constant circulation. There's no breathing of stale air over and over again. Backseat passengers get the same warmth as those in front. How do you choose the temperature you want? Very easy. By setting this dial at the point you want. Weather Eye Magic does the rest. For the heating unit is thermostatically controlled, like a gas or oil furnace in a modern home. The temperature inside the car is kept at a constant level automatically, no matter what the temperature outside. The standard Weather Eye provides adequate defrosting for all normal conditions. And a special defroster is available for regions where the winter cold is extreme. Now, here's something that is vitally important. Forward motion tends to create a partial vacuum in most cars. Since nature abhors a vacuum, cold, unheated air is sucked in through every body opening, creating chilling drafts which make it impossible to heat the car evenly. In contrast, because of the large volume of fresh air entering through the cowl ventilator, pressure is created inside the Nash body which is slightly higher than the outside pressure. The result is that used air is constantly being forced out of the Nash. That's what makes smoke disappear like magic, makes weather eye ventilation entirely different from all other methods. And it's draft proof. But listen to this. The higher inside pressure means that dangerous carbon monoxide and other fumes simply cannot seep into the car from engine or exhaust. Haven't you, when driving in closed cars in winter, often been afflicted by an unaccountable headache or drowsiness? Haven't you heard of drivers mysteriously going to sleep at the wheel with a serious accident as a result? The cause is often the fact that the low air pressure inside has allowed deadly carbon monoxide and other fumes to seep into the car. This cannot happen with the weather eye because pressure inside the Nash is greater than outside. And here's proof. This chart shows the results of an impartial test conducted by independent safety engineers using accurate measuring devices. See how free of carbon monoxide a Nash Lafayette is when equipped with weather eye, which proves that the weather eye offers more than comfort. It also is a vital safety and health factor. And now for another exclusive feature, the Nash sleeping car, available as an optional extra for tourists, hunters, and campers. Those who have this feature can turn the rear compartment of their Nash Lafayette into a deluxe sleeping compartment in a few minutes. Get hotel bed comfort without having to pay for it. The standard package consists of a comfortable three-section hair-filled mattress and a folding canvas platform. The deluxe package is the same, except that an inflatable air mattress is provided. On this mattress, you're literally sleeping on air. And remember, the buyer must buy Nash if he wants this money-saving, pleasure-heightening contribution to modern motoring. In addition to all its exclusive features and quality, Nash has nationwide service facilities. There is a Nash dealership service department in virtually every important trading center. And high resale value is something else to which Nash Lafayette buyers can look forward with confidence. With its advanced styling, high quality, and exclusive features, this car is going to retain a big percentage of its original value. And speaking of original value, look at the price. $840 delivered at the factory. This is for the Nash Lafayette special four-door sedan with either the slipstream or trunk back. In addition, the Nash Lafayette is also available in a deluxe model with a host of extra value at only $45 more. Now, consider what the Nash Lafayette gives for the money in comparison with other cars. Look at this. The Nash Lafayette gives a longer wheelbase, more horsepower, and has 384 pounds more road weight than the Mercury, which costs $122 more. The Nash Lafayette gives two inches more wheelbase, 14 more horsepower, and 295 pounds more road weight than the Pontiac 6. Yet the Pontiac costs $26 more. Although Olds and Nash Lafayette weigh the same, the Nash has two inches more wheelbase and nine more horsepower. Yet the Oldsmobile costs $59 more. The Nash Lafayette offers 230 pounds more road weight than the Dodge Special and 12 more horsepower. Wheelbases are the same. But you've already seen how much more room the Nash Lafayette has than the Dodge. Yet the Dodge costs $15 more. Now, comparing the Nash Lafayette Special with the all three cars, we find that with four and a half inches more wheelbase, 14 more horsepower, and 290 pounds more road weight, the Nash Lafayette cost, delivered at the factory, only $74 more than the Chevrolet Master Deluxe. Only $4.10 more a month on an 18-month time payment plan. The Nash Lafayette has five inches more wheelbase, 14 more horsepower, and 390 pounds more road weight than the Ford V8. Yet the Nash Lafayette costs only $57 more. 
this would amount to only $3.94 more a month. Although it has three inches more wheelbase, 17 more horsepower, and 440 pounds more road weight, the Nash Lafayette costs only $35 more than the Plymouth Deluxe, which would amount to only $1.94 more a month. In short, it's obvious that in every factor that really counts, in beauty, comfort, safety, performance, economy, and low first price, the Nash Lafayette for 1939 far outstrips every car in or near its price class. No wonder it's the car everybody likes. It's the car which, on every count, is the true value leader in the low price field. you're putting on, and I get the idea perfectly. Why, Dave, what do you mean? You know what I mean. All week you've been leaving booklets about the World's Fair around where I could see them. Now, you couldn't possibly be hinting, could you? For instance, that the World's Fair would be a good place to go on our vacation? Why, Dave, what a perfectly darling idea. Of course, I've heard so much about it, and I do think people ought to make an effort to keep up with the times, and, well, it wouldn't cost very much, but I never dreamed you were planning on going. Hey, and I can't... wait a minute. Well, of course, we mustn't wait too long to start making our plans because there'll be so many things to think of. Brenda, there are two ways to go. No. No? No what? No dough. Therefore, no go. In other words, no World's Fair. Oh. Well, anyway... Now, look, honey. We need a new car. I need it for business. New cars cost money. So if I spend all our money for a car, how, my little chickadee, are we going to get to the fair? Oh, in the new car. Why, Dave, that's wonderful. You do think of everything. Oh, cut it, Jean. I'm serious. We can't possibly afford it. I wish we could, but we can't. Okay, Dave. I'll forget it. I wouldn't bet on that. Anyhow, a trip like that's no vacation for a salesman. I have to drive miles every day. Well, it'd be a change driving through a different part of the country. Yeah, if I were a hot carrier, I suppose it'd be a change to carry a load of cement on Sunday instead of brakes. Maybe they used to call them pleasure cars, but an automobile is just part of my working equipment now. My idea of a vacation is to get away from cars and from hard hotel beds and hot, stuffy rooms. Oh, well, it was just an idea. Anyhow, it's time I hit the hay. I've got to be up at three. I know the fishing season opens tomorrow, but do you have to serve breakfast to the fish? Say, you've heard George Martin crowing all year about the fish he caught first day of last season. <laughs> have I? I could give a cast-by-cast cast and strike-by-strike strike account of that affair from memory. Well, he and I fish the same stream, and those fish bite early in the morning. Last year, he got there early, and I didn't, so all I got was wet feet and sunburn. Well, it'll be different this year. Tomorrow night, you'll be cooking a mess of the best trout you ever tasted. Uh-huh. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> So what? I like eggs. I love them. But, honey, you said you'd bring back... Yeah, sure. But how should I know that Martin was going to sleep in his car right by the stream? He got a string of fish as long as my arm. And all I got was a chance to hear how he caught them. So I like eggs. Goodness, he's crazier about fishing than you are, sleeping in the car. Not so crazy. He's got a new Nash with a bed right in the car. Oh, I saw one of them in a dealer's window the other day. They're cute. Say... Those are good-sized beds, aren't they? Hmm, they have to be for Martin. He's a six-footer. Why? Dave, why don't we look at the new Nash? It's a good car, isn't it? Why, yes, it's a swell car. But... And with that bed arrangement in it, you'd enjoy your fishing trip so much more. Mm -hmm. You have to get some recreation, Dave, and you do love to fish. Say, you're getting awfully interested in my fishing. Oh, I think a wife should take an interest in her husband's hobbies. Don't you? How touching. How very, very touching. Yes, but don't you think we ought to at least look at the new Nash? Well, there's no hurry about it, is there? Mm, no, except I will be downtown Monday afternoon anyway, and you could meet me at the Nash dealers right after work, and oh, so I... Oh, can... all right. All right. You're so good to me, dear. <laughs> Good 
good stunt, all right, but uh, how do you set up the bed? Let me show you how simple it is on this car over here. First, we raise the trunk lid like this and take out the bed equipment. Now we can make up the bed from inside the car. You see, the back of the rear seat is hinged, so we just raise it and the stay braces hold it up. The rear seat cushion is leveled up with a metal rack, which comes as a regular part of the equipment. The cot unfolds like this, quickly and easily, and goes right here. Well... That makes the bed a full six feet long. Clever people, these Chinese. Next, we take the mattress. Is that really a mattress? It certainly is. It's an air mattress. When it's folded, it takes up very little room in the trunk. But when it's inflated, you're actually sleeping on air. My, what a grand idea. Yes, isn't it? That's a simple, quick way of camping, with no tents and camping equipment needed. You just park and make up your bed. Yeah, but how much does it cost? This air mattress I've been showing you comes with our deluxe package, which costs only $25 as an accessory. Hmm, that's not so bad. No, it really isn't. And if you prefer, we have a lower price package, which costs only $12. What's the difference? Well, the difference is only in the mattress. The deluxe, as you saw, is an air mattress. The lower price one is hair-filled very soft and comfortable, though I personally would rather pay a little more for the extra comfort of the deluxe mattress. But for that matter, you don't have to buy anything extra at all to use the sleeping car. The basic feature is built into all Nash sedans. You could improvise your own bed with blankets and pillows from your home if you want to. Oh, I'd prefer to have the air mattress. But uh, what about flies and mosquitoes and bugs? You don't have to worry about that. We even have screens for the car windows, so you get plenty of fresh air inside the car. Say, they thought of everything, didn't they? With this car, a fisherman or a hunter can park and get a real night's sleep beside the old fishing hole. You see, Dave? Oh, are you a fisherman, Mr. Miller? I've often wondered. Why, I should say he is. And then you realize how convenient this car would be. Well, in a way. You know, this bed car feature must be a real convenience. Nash has sold thousands of cars equipped this way. My goodness, there must be a fisherman sleeping by every trout stream in the country. <laughs> Well, probably more bed equipments have been sold to sportsmen than to any other one group. But this bed-in-a-car feature has a surprising number of uses. For instance, you see that the car can be driven while the bed's made up. What's the idea of that? Well, we've all had emergency trips when we drove day and night if necessary. In a Nash, one person can drive while his passengers get some sleep before they take their turns at the wheel. That beats trying to sleep sitting up, Dave. Besides, I never can find anything to lean my head against. And it's lots safer to get some restful sleep if you must make that kind of a trip. You know how summer cottages run short of beds over weekends when people begin dropping in and then stay all night? It always happens. Well, a Nash sleeping car solves that problem for its owner. And, of course, you really can save money on a trip by sleeping in the car. That's why so many salesmen are buying Nash sleeping cars. Doctors in rural districts sometimes have to be their own ambulance service, so they're buying Nash sleeping cars. And because the seat back lifts up, salesmen can carry long, bulky sample cases that won't fit in the ordinary trunk. Winter sports enthusiasts can carry their skis. In fact, I've even seen hunters carry their hunting dogs in the trunk. With the seat back pulled up, the owner puts a wire screen over the trunk opening, and the dogs get as much air as the occupants of the car themselves. And believe it or not, lots of people on very hot nights will drive out to the country or the hills for a cool night's sleep to escape the heat of a valley or a city. In fact, I've found that the best way to find new uses for the sleeping car is just to show it to everybody who comes in the sales room. Once they see the sleeping car, they think of their own uses for it. And about half the time, it's something that never occurred to me. Yeah, I can see quite a few uses for it myself. Uh -huh. You know, this must be a pretty good thing to sell. It is especially this year with two big fairs going on in San Francisco and New York. If you folks are going, you'll save a lot of money with the bed car feature, and the fun of camping out in comfort will be as much to remember as the fair itself. Yes, wouldn't it be fun? It certainly would. And so inexpensive. We're not going to the fair. Oh. But, um, say, isn't this the car that has the weather eye? Yes, that's another exclusive Nash feature. You see, Mrs. Miller, in a Nash... You know, Gene, I don't go for a lot of high-powered adjectives. I guess Nash doesn't either. How's that? 
Well, in this book, they go over the whole car and show you just why they build it differently from other cars. How do they build it? Good? <laughs> well, they seem to be in favor of it. And for my money, it's the best and most complete car we could get for anywhere near the price. Then, too, it has features that no other cars offer at any price. And isn't it a beauty? You know, I'm crazy about a Nash, Dave. I like the way it took those bumps and sailed up the river hill. And then when you think of that sleeping car arrangement and that weather eye... Hey, Dave, do you think there's any sense in looking further? Well, Jean, it looks to me as if we couldn't help ourselves. We've wanted every Nash feature we've seen. And by buying a Nash is the only way we can get them. Oh, Dave, I can hardly wait till we get it. Well, I'll admit I'm kind of anxious for the first fishing trip in it. Remember what you said about the days of the pleasure car being gone? Well, they were. Nash just crossed me up and brought him back again. This booklet tells all about some swell fishing spot. Oh, I'll be able to find plenty myself. And then there's this map I worked up. Hmm, let's see it. Yeah, Kingman's Lake. Oh, that's famous. And I hear all these streams near... Hey, but say, isn't it queer... All these swell fishing spots you've found for me are on the way to the World's Fair. Why, so they are. <laughs> I see. You're going to get to that fair even if I have to fish our way there. <laughs> Wouldn't you just hate that? <laughs> oh, gosh, Jean, if we only could. Let's try to figure it out, Dave. You know we'll have to pay lots less for a Nash than we thought we'd have to spend for a car like that. Yeah, that's true enough. We can save at least $50 there. And you checked up on gas consumption of the Nash and the amount of oil it uses. Remember, you're going to be saving money on that all through the year. Oh, now stop it. You're making me feel wealthy. And we'll save lots of money on any trip by sleeping in the car most of the time. Right beside those trout streams you've never fished before. Hey, wait a minute. Let's get these Nash savings down on paper, in dollars and cents. Here's a pencil. By golly, Jean, we can do it, can't we? Of course we can. Oh, darling, we're really going. Nothing else but... My hero. Who, me? Yes, Dave, I knew you'd find a way. centuries, people in India and elsewhere have believed that the past, present, and future could be seen in the depths of a Swami's crystal ball. Most of us in America don't believe in such things, but sometimes we wish we could. Here's a man, for instance, who would find a means of foretelling the future a very great help to him in coming to an important decision. Who is he? He's a typical American automobile buyer of today, a man who considers an automobile investment from every angle, and who, therefore, like thousands of others, is naturally attracted to the outstanding values of the new Nash. He's impressed by its dramatic modern styling and its enduring good taste. He has convinced himself of its interior luxury, its comfort, safety, performance, and operating economy. He realizes the value to him of the many exclusive features which set Nash entirely apart from other cars. He knows that for more than 23 years, the Nash reputation for fine engineering, durable quality, and long-range economy has stood unchallenged in the industry. That Nash is sound and stable, the fourth largest automobile manufacturing concern in America, exceeded in resources only by General Motors, Ford, and the Chrysler Corporation. And that the cumulative experience gained in building more than 1,200,000 fine cars is the best proof obtainable that future Nash products will live up to their fine reputation. Nevertheless, there is an additional matter which this buyer and every buyer should consider before purchasing any fine car. And that is, what about resale value? What can I expect to get for my car when the time comes for me to trade it in? Sometimes this question is raised by a competitive salesman who can find nothing else in the Nash to criticize. Or perhaps by a competitive dealer whose used car inventory prevents him from making a fair trade-in offer on a Nash. As far as the past is concerned, impartial statistics show that Nash cars always have stood abreast or ahead of other cars in actual resale value. Here's proof of the statement, as taken from the used car guidebooks used generally by dealers throughout the country. The book on the left is issued by the National Automobile Dealers Association. The other is the well-known Blue Book, both books being the accepted standards in the industry on used car values. 
In the group made up of 1938 model low-priced cars, the NADA guidebook shows a group average of $590. In this case, the Lafayette is quoted at $610, $20 higher than the group average. Using the blue book figures for the same group of cars, we find that the group average is $590. This time, the Lafayette is quoted at $598, $8 higher than the average for the group. Now let's take another Nash model and another year. In the Ambassador 6 price group for 1936 models, the group average, as quoted in the blue book, is $455. The Ambassador 6 is quoted at exactly the same. Again, let's take another Nash model and another year. In the Ambassador 8 group for 1937 models, the average, as quoted in the blue book, is $642. But the Ambassador 8 is quoted at $655, $13 higher than the group average. In short, all Nash models equal or surpass the group average in resale value. But of course, the present day buyer is interested in the future, not in the past. He wants to know what the resale value of the car he buys will be several years from now. No one can tell exactly, but you don't need a crystal globe to look ahead and see a promising future for a car which is as outstanding in the present as the new Nash. Nevertheless, we can use this crystal ball and your imagination to introduce you to three different men who are in a position to know more than anyone else about the future value of any current model cars. And here's the first of these men. I'm a salesman for an independent used car dealer, folks. I can give you the straight dope on resale value because my firm plays no favorites. We sell used cars of all makes and don't care what make they are as long as they sell at top market price. Nevertheless, I can tell you right now that the new Nash should have a mighty sweet trade-in value several years from now. How can I tell? Mostly by its modern styling. A used car that looks modern and up-to-date sells readily, and the new Nash is so far in advance in styling now that it's bound to be a style leader on our lot several years from now. Take the Nash Fender headlights for one example. In a couple of years at least, I'm inclined to think all cars will have built-in headlights. That will make style orphans out of all the cars which are still hanging on to the old-type frog eye headlights this year. And believe me, style orphans are hard to sell. Then, I want to point out the Nash slipstream treatment. It's modern and will look that way for some years to come, in contrast with other less modern rear-end designs. Another thing, Nash also offers a trunk model in addition to the slipstream model. None of the other current model cars gives this choice, so the used car buyer will have his choice a year or two from now. Speaking of trunks, Compare the Nash trunk lines with trunk models of other makes. The Nash trunk blends right into the other lines of the car. The awkward bulging lines of the trunks of other cars make them look as if they were stuck on instead of built in. Now, you may think style is purely a matter of opinion, but that's not so from the standpoint of resale value. Modern styling is a definite asset in resale. For instance, some years ago we had quite a problem moving used cars with straight windshields after people realized that a sloping windshield is one mark of a modern car. Then, there were the soft top cars that lingered on after most of the industry had changed to steel tops. And remember when they changed from straight box type rear ends to sloping ones? Say, the resale value of those piano box numbers went down like a shot. So the modern styling of the new Nash is one factor contributing to high resale value. And that's not all. Look at Nash's reputation for economy. You know the Nash Lafayette won the Gilmore Yosemite economy run for cars in its class just last January. Here are two reasons why Nash is economical. Built-in manifolding, which gives quicker warm-up and saves gas, and which other cars don't have. The optional cruising gear, which cuts down engine revolutions when on the highway. These features, you see, will give the second owner of a Nash the same economy characteristics that the first owner received. So a used car that has the edge in styling and an outstanding reputation for economical operation is the kind a dealer can make a real allowance on to the original owner. Thank you, Mr. Used Car Salesman. Now let's peer into that crystal ball again and look for another man who can give us some really authoritative information on resale value. Here he is, a shop foreman, the man in charge of the reconditioning which is done to a car before it goes out on the lot for sale. Hello, everybody. I'm the fellow who has to tell the boss how much he ought to deduct from his allowance to you to cover the cost of putting your used car in shape so we can sell it readily. Now, the first thing we have to do to any used car is to fix up its appearance. And believe me, right there is where you're lucky if you bought a Nash. In nine cases out of ten, all you have to do is to wash and polish up a Nash 
and the finish is just as bright and glossy as it was the day you bought it. There are two reasons for that that I happen to know of. Lots of car finishes are just the conventional lacquer. They're sprayed on and then dried. When they lose their luster, it's gone. Well, that's not the case with Nash. In the first place, Nash has an enamel finish that retains its luster. In the second place, the enamel is baked on for permanence. Then, too, Nash cars are completely bonderized under the finish before the paint is put on. Not just the fenders, but all sheet metal parts of the body and the car. That provides a smooth base for the enamel, for one thing, but more than that, complete bonderizing is the best protection there is against rust spots. And don't think that isn't something to consider when you're buying a used car. We don't expect much interior reconditioning costs on Nash cars either. That Nash upholstery, carpeting, and hardware really wears. Usually a good cleaning is all that's needed. Mechanically, we never expect to find much wrong with a Nash because we know they're built to stand up. Just for instance, Nash cylinder blocks and cylinder heads are made out of some kind of extra hard alloy iron that never seems to wear at all. So we don't have to worry about valve or cylinder wear unless the car has seen a lot more than normal mileage. Many other cars use much softer, and I suppose much cheaper, blocks and cylinder heads. Well, we get used to expecting valve grinding, cylinder reboring, and other major repair jobs in conditioning those cars. And these costs must be deducted from the trade-in allowance. Then Nash uses aluminum pistons with invar struts and four rings, probably the finest in the industry. Must cost the company a lot, but boy, they're worth it to the owner. Here are some more features that save reconditioning cost. We know Nash has had full pressure lubrication for years, including even the piston pins. It also has individually cooled cylinders and full length water jackets. Lots of cars still don't have these features. As for the crankshaft and main bearings, the fact that Nash cars use seven to nine main bearings compared with three to five main bearings in other cars in their price classes tells a mechanic plenty about what to expect in long bearing life. I've also noticed that Nash brakes last longer and need relining less often. That's because they're bigger than other cars. So we seldom have to deduct a brake reline from the trade-in on a Nash. The unusual frame construction of the Nash is another double-barreled advantage. The Nash frame and underbody are so strong and well-built that we almost never have to touch them. You just don't have as many squeaks and rattles as you get in most other cars. And two, from the safety standpoint, that dual frame construction gives the salesman out on the lot a real talking point, because used car prospects are just as interested in safety as you are. There are lots of other examples I could give you which would further prove Nash's durability, but even if there weren't, the features I've mentioned alone are enough to assure you that you're going to get a higher trade-in allowance on a Nash than you can expect to get on many cars that would need a lot more reconditioning. Thank you, Mr. Shop Foreman. Now we're going to ask our Crystal Globe to introduce us to the man who, in the last analysis, really determines resale value. Here he is, and who is he? I'm the man who's going to be in the market for a good used car about the time you're ready to trade your 1939 car in. Right now, my mouth is watering for one of those new 1939 Nashes. Boy, what I wouldn't give if I had the money to own one of those babies right now. Take this Nash insulation. Sand Mortex, I believe they call it. Maybe you think that isn't going to interest a smart used car buyer. One of the worst things about most used cars is that they're so darn noisy. Well, if half of what they say about Sand Mortex is true, the 1939 Nashers are going to be the quietest cars on the used car lot a few years from now. They tell me that this insulation makes Nash cars 25% quieter than cars that don't have it, and no other cars except Nash have it. Now, another thing. I have a friend who has a new Nash with that bed car feature. That would mean a lot to me as a man who likes to fish. The fact that Nash is the only car that has a feature like this is going to add to its resale value, let me tell you. And I can see plenty of other uses for this feature which would make me want to buy a Nash, even uh, uh, if that were Nash's only advantage, which of course it isn't. Still a third thing, and boy, this is something big. It's that Nash weather eye. I'm telling you, I took a ride in the new Nash during the winter, and I didn't realize till then how much you have to put up with in cars with ordinary heaters. It's not only that you can control the temperature inside a Nash, but the air is clean and fresh, not stuffy and smoky as in other cars with the windows closed. It actually is like spring inside a Nash. 
and the heat is spread evenly throughout the car. It isn't a case of roasting in the front seat and freezing in the back. In fact, no other car this year offers anything like the weather eye. You know, we used car buyers want modern features, just like new car buyers do. And when a used car doesn't have them, we won't pay as much for them. Thank you, Mr. Used Car Buyer. We feel that no one can fail to see the logic behind these three interviews. It's obvious to anyone that a car which is leading the style trend today is going to have a greater style value tomorrow than cars which are lagging behind the field now, whose stuck-on headlights and bulging trucks, for instance, already belong to an out-of-date style era. It's also clear that a car built like Nash, with such a complete list of durability features, is going to be worth more a few years from now than cars which deny their buyers these advantages. And lastly, it's easy to see that a car which has the unique and exclusive weather eye, the bed car feature, sand mortex, twin ignition, built-in manifolding, and all the other exclusive Nash advantages will have resale value tomorrow equal to or greater than any other car on the market today, whether it be a Ford or Chevrolet, a Buick, or even a Cadillac. The more you consider resale value, the farther you go into the reasons behind it, the more quickly anyone is convinced that for the new car buyer, today's best buy is the Nash. And for the used car buyer of the future, the best buy still will be Nash, the car that gives the new car buyer of today the new kind of motoring which used car buyers will pay top prices for tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs>